Okay, friends, we look like a, a lunch assembly line here, and that's because we're a lunch assembly line today. And actually, let me get already. Already, I need to run around and get some things here. Today, we have homeschool group, and we need to get out the door for that. I am packing our lunches. Something I love to do, I did some videos like this, it's probably been a year or so ago now, is um, do a bunch of Q&As while I'm cooking or doing something else. So I thought last night I would love to do a Q&A video. Didn't have time to like just sit, sit down in my chair or sit down here in my kitchen. Actually, I chose bedtime over getting a Q&A filmed and I thought I could do this in the morning while I'm getting our lunch together. So that is what I'm currently doing. Kids are getting ready, getting themselves ready to go. And I asked for questions over on Instagram. I think earlier in December, I also asked for questions. And then, you know, holidays, they, they just roll over in a wonderful way and they take, they take precedent. So I didn't get it filmed in December. And I can never uh, take the few minutes it takes to go back through old questions and look those up. So what I'm gonna do today, answer a bunch of Instagram questions, and then what I don't get answered, I'm gonna do another live. I did a live stream probably a week or so ago now. And so on Monday, so on Monday, January 20th, I'm going to do another live stream and I will be answering just more questions I don't get to today, but we're gonna hopefully roll through a bunch of. And what I've got going here for lunch, I had bought these lunch cubes beginning of the school year this year for field trips, <clears throat> for field trips and days like today when we need to take our lunch to homeschool group. I loved how our homeschool group used to do it where every family brought something to share and it was like church potluck style. It was just fun to try all the different things. But of course, with sickness, and germ sharing and allergies and everything involved, it's just better overall if everybody brings their own lunches. Although sharing is my favorite. I am getting some colored peppers chopped and then we will start rolling through questions. Lion Den Leader asked, pros and cons to our big van, AKA bus. Is it hard to drive? Is it hard to steer? What about parking, gas, car seats? Everything needed info. So we have, and now I feel like I have to tell you what I'm going back and forth with with the food here too. I'll tell you what I'm doing to this orange here in a minute, or maybe I should tell you now. Can Jim Morrell answer questions, prep food, and talk? I don't know. It might be like, can you walk and chew gum at the same time? Um, I saw this trick years ago where you take a butter knife, not necessarily a, a sharp knife, and you take it around an orange, and then you kind of put your finger in there, and then that allows you, it's just like a quick and easy way to peel an orange. Don't know where I learned it from, but I've been doing it for a while. So our van is a 2013 Sprinter van. It has the big fat Mercedes symbol on it. Um, it's a Dodge, it's a Mopar, which my husband being a car guy, anything that we purchase has to be in the Mopar family, which is a, Chry see if I can even do it, a Chrysler, I know, Scanner Danner's wife, Mrs. Danner, you're gonna get this. So it has to be a Chrysler, Eagle, Jeep, Plymouth, can I pass this test after almost, after 21 years of marriage? There's a, the Mopar family of vehicles. So anything we buy has to fall in there. So we had limited choices. You know, Travis would not even hear anything Chevy or Ford. I know lots of families are doing the Ford Transits these days. My good friend Ashley Bufa from Freedom Moms, she just got a beautiful black Ford Transit. Now, it looks a lot like my van. It has the high top. I don't know if hers is 12 or 15 passenger. Ashley, chime in and tell us what your van is. Uh, but she absolutely loves it. Something that Travis also wanted was he wanted a diesel engine, so our van has that. So our van, it took us well over a year to find it because we wanted to buy it used. We did not want a car payment. 
and we wanted a good deal. We ended up having to go to New Jersey to buy it. We had not had a new to us vehicle in over 10 years. Our last vehicle had over 350,000 miles on it. It was a 2000 Dodge Ram van, 15 passenger. We bought that one. It was in decent condition, but it was not running. The interior was okay though. Outside was okay too for the age. So Travis put a, um, I think it was a refurbished engine and transmission. It might have been a brand new engine and transmission. I don't know. Car, car details, car details. And before that, we went through several other vans in various conditions, all Dodge, of course, that um, we got a few years use out of each of them. And before that, we had uh, went through two different Dodge or Chrysler mini just traditional style minivans so our particular van checked a lot of boxes in what travis wanted in a vehicle now come on orange come on i vlogged when we went to pick it up of course i've done some of those super controversial van cleaning videos um all the karens get upset about those van cleaning videos and sorry anywho uh we we love our van we use it hard. We put a lot of miles on it. It does have the high top. Uh, Travis said there is some sort of, I'm probably gonna say it wrong, but I've had moms ask me if I'm concerned about the high top or say that they were looking at the high top, but then they decided against it. It's a big van. I don't feel any difference driving that van on the interstate versus the other four or five big van. I think, no, really, Jane Bro, how many other big vans did you have? We had three other big vans versus the other three big vans. Big vans are big vans, and they feel like you're driving a big van. Although our new to us used one is certainly smoother, I don't feel anything in particular with the wind over the top. Travis said that Sprinter has built in some sort of wind resistance mechanism on the top for highway safety so you can probably google all of that uh, we bought the van with the extended wheelbase so there's a lot of cargo space in the back which i absolutely love not that the nissan envy and i'm sorry this is not nissan envy hate this is me assessing vans okay in looking at the nissan envy it reminded me of our other three big vans even the 15 passenger that we had if we had kids in seats and I went to Costco, there was like this much cargo room in the back without removing that back seat. So when we would go to Costco, uh, the food ended up being under seats, kids holding it, just around with everything. And I've seen some friends who have the envy, uh, there's just not a lot of cargo room. So that's my only non-expert van comparison. Please be gentle with me in the comments. What we ended up doing with our 15 passenger van is we had to take that back seat out to have room. So anyway, that's why in the Sprinter, I love it because it has tons of room in the back, which is super helpful and exciting in my life. So obviously on a day like today, it will be, why are you using freezer, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches when you have all this other prep stuff out? Well, if I wasn't here making this video, I would have already had all this packed and we'd already be out the door. Uh, so this is a little extra special prep time for mama on YouTube here. These are the Stony Creek Organic Kids. Uh, I still call them Gogurt, although that's not the brand, the little tube yogurts there. Kids are eating all of those up. So I'm working on Daniel's little lunch box right now. I was gonna make them kind of like a little hearty mix with some little chips and marshmallows and pretzels <coughs> as their treat. So anyway, and with the van, as I said, it's a diesel. I think we're somewhere between 13 to 15 miles per gallon. For parking, the only issue that we, that I have run into, obviously we can't do parking garages. So like when I go to DC now, I used to be able to drive all my other big vans into the Ronald Reagan building. They have parking underneath. I could park a big 15 passenger van as long as it wasn't a high top in that Ronald Reagan building. And then we could walk to the National Mall, etc. from there. So now what we do for the big van, if I'm taking everybody, is we park and we get the Vienna Metro and we take the Metro into DC. And of course that's fun because who doesn't love to ride the Metro? Now we haven't been to DC 
since last spring. It's not that far from us at all. Uh, in fact, one time we had a White House tour. This was many years ago, but we left super early in the morning on like a Saturday, and we were from our house to parking there at the White House in 45 minutes. But because of traffic, it takes an hour and a half or so. Uh, or longer, it really depended on traffic. Anywho, that's the only thing with the big van when I'm taking everyone. Now, I can still drive us into the National Zoo. We can park at the National Zoo and enjoy the zoo there in DC. But if we're gonna go spend a day at the mall, going to all the museums, the National Mall there, or like last spring, whenever we saw the cherry blossoms, we had to park and then take the metro in. Okay, another another mama, her username is Mama Pete 5 says, I'm new here. How many kiddos do you have? And I do know some of these questions I'm seeing are from new folks. So welcome, welcome new folks. We have eight children. They are ages 19 down to two. We have six boys and two girls. Uh, their ages at the moment are, let's get this right, we've got two, two and a half, five, six, but almost seven, just turned nine, 10 and a half, 13 and a half, I have to get those halves in because it's like you're marching to the next stage and then 16 and three quarters are almost a half there. Um, so those are the current kiddo ages. This is the last thing that I'm chopping, chopping with this knife, by the way, but pretty much everyone in our family really likes spicy cheese. And then our oldest son is an adult. He has launched, he has flown the coop. He runs his own business. I am one of his clients. He has many other clients. He does wedding videography. He does video editing. He does all your video needs. So if you're a YouTuber, he's got several channels that he's worked with. He also edits YouTube videos. Yay! Now, some of the questions, I've I received this question probably seven times in a variety of ways. So I'll go ahead and jump into it. Although I don't have an exact one here to read for you. People want to know why I haven't shared my adult. We're just getting into like J. Morrell Stewart gossip. I see it searched. I know you're looking for it. Very naughty there. I'm just a mama, right? I have a lot of people asking why I haven't shared my adult son's personal life details and if I will. So I have never shared my kids' personal details on YouTube and I don't plan to start now. So I do have an adult son. He does have exciting, wonderful things going on in life, but I'm just here stirring spaghetti sauce. This channel has never been a traditional family vlogging channel. So there's a lot of family stuff that happens and joyous events and all those exciting things and I don't update on everything over here. I feel like I update a little more on Instagram just because I'm, I can't help but share cute and fun pictures over there. That's always fun. You know, I started on Instagram just like a lot of things, not thinking that a lot of people would see what I'm doing over there. I was just sharing pictures to have, to have some fun. And so I do share more like little snapshots of daily life and stuff. Hey, if you're not following me on Instagram, be sure to go ahead and do that. But as far as like major life events and what each kid is doing and then as they launch into adulthood, you know, I just won't be sharing much. So, okay, Jody asked, what is my favorite movie? Well, boy, that's always a good one. I'm gonna just put these peppers here in a paper towel, by the way. Um, if I have to think of my favorite movie, I always default to any any remake of a Jane Austen novel. I love Sense and Sensibility and Emma with Gwyneth Paltrow and uh, I think was it Kira Knightley is in Pride and Prejudice. I just I love I love Jane Austen novels, so I naturally love Jane Austen movies. And then I have this question a bazillion different ways. Will I have any more children? Sure, I definitely plan to have more children and hopefully to adopt some kiddos at some point too. As you know, all of those things are in the Lord's hand and are definitely 100% his leading and timing. So those things will be a happening though. See, I like, even if the kids don't eat these little crackers there, like I say, I know it's always, because we go, we have morning classes, then we have lunch, then the kids play outside, then we have these long afternoon club times. Kids are in music club and art club, and I'm leading board game club, and we have Lego club, and jewelry making club, and 
all kinds of clubs. So then after that, we end up going outside and depending on the weather, which today the weather's looking pretty good, although we're supposed to have snow tomorrow, depending on the weather, they will go outside and play more. So by the time we get back in the van, kids are scrounging around for an afternoon snack. So if I pack their lunches a little heavy, because what happens is at actual lunchtime, they're so excited to go back outside and play that they end up just being skimpy on their lunch. So they eat the rest as second lunch on the way home. So yes, definitely we'll have more kiddos. We're just obviously not today. Palm Family Homestead asks, how many hours a week do you work on your business? Oh, just, you know, I love talking business stuff. I say one day I will have a business podcast or consulting or more uh, entrepreneur minded things whenever I go to conferences, I usually, and I'm speaking there, I know like that I end up, of course, talking about business. So if you want me to talk about business, I do usually end up chatting about it quite a lot. Okay, how many hours a week I work with my business? It really just depends on the week. It really, really and truly does. Um, there are definitely weeks where family life and events and so much is going on that videos can be published that I filmed a few weeks before and I'm just doing the bare minimal survival mode business for that particular week and it's less than 10 hours definitely. I have weeks where I don't get anything filmed at all um, and just again everything business-wise is very, very low on the list. Now, the way that I survive and keep doing this, I have been online for going on 10 years now, been on YouTube for over five years now. My big uh, secret <laughs> about still being here is I do keep showing up. So even if I have a week where my work hours are very low, I still have new recipes being published on the blog. I still have new videos coming up over here. I still have emails going out. I still have social media being posted. Oh, and by the way, Benjamin loves these dried apples. I got these at Sharp Shopper for $1.99 and he, call, he calls them apple fries. So that's what he saw me, he was like, fry fry. And so I said, oh, well, they're apple rings. They're apple fries. So. He will definitely love to have these to snack on. Anywho, then we have weeks where I'm doing a lot of big things, especially if I'm launching something new, sharing something new, if it's like freezer meal packs, or right now I just recently launched my new large family table community, and boy, it's just been a ton of work. And I'm coming to the end of that time now, and I'll be able to just focus in on membership and focus in on the YouTube channel, and the blog, and the other things I have going on. But right now, I'm doing a lot of promoting of that. I'm doing lives. I'm answering a lot of questions. I'm I'm showing up every day online personally, handling handling the the questions and the concerns and the business and. All those details going in. Let's see, Benjamin also loves craisins. This bag has never been opened. Bust into the craisins for Ben. Um, so right now, these last two weeks, I'm probably, well, I have to be getting, you know, heavy 35, 40 hours for these last two weeks. Of course, working for myself, I can fit it in as I'm able. Like right now, I can sit here and do this chatty Q&A while I make lunches video. Uh, but yes, this still counts as work time to me. I do count my filming time within my work time too. Although the gift of filming is that it doesn't always feel like work to me. Like you all know I'm able, and I do. I, if I had to have everything Pinterest perfect and thought out and scripted and planned ahead uh, to a high degree, I would have never started YouTube five years ago. But if I can turn on the camera and show you what I'm dumping in the slow cooker or show you what I bought at the store or sit here and chat with you while I make my kids lunches anyway, it helps make it all possible. So I guess I should say I count filming time loosely. What I need to do in any given week, I have a dedicated work day. So right now in my current routine, what I'm 
doing is I'm going out on Fridays and I go have a sit down dedicated work day of about 12 to 15 hours and I bust out everything I can possibly do. Now that 12 to 15 hours is what I have to do on the back end, stuff you never ever see beyond filming videos. Filming my videos on the fly could easily be another 10 to 12 hours a week, but again, lots of grace with those hours because I am literally setting up a camera while I'm doing other stuff, setting up the camera while I'm doing freezer cooking or making spaghetti sauce or sharing a meal plan or something like that. So back to that question. So I do uh, 12 to 15 hours dedicated work day. That's me sitting on my laptop working and then I have my filming time on top of that. So I feel like that puts me middle of the road to heavy part time. I know what it feels like to have a business because this is how my prior setup was with the blog that I sold until I got it to an even keel. And I know I'm mentioning things, some of you may think I've only done spaghetti sauce on YouTube. I have had multiple layers in my business over the last going on 10 years now. And I have shared a lot of Q&A videos about large family income, making money online, how I run my business, those kind of things. So I will have all of those linked in the description below. So I don't have, but I'm just giving you like some cliff notes now. But anyway, so there's a lot to this. So I know another question that I received is someone wanted to know what kind of help I have in my business. My business, all the things you see me sharing online, it's 120 hours a week, sometimes more. And I don't do all of that. When I had my other blog and I was playing on YouTube because I was a burned out blogger and I loved making videos to connect with you, to connect with other moms, and to give encouragement, etc., without having to write a 1200 word blog post. I was editing my own videos and I did that for over three years to help myself find my own voice with what in the world I was even doing. I started YouTube on a total like, that looks like fun, I want to give that a try, whim. So back in my farmhouse vlogs and even um, the first two years after we moved into this house in the wilderness here, I was still editing my own videos. And so that was taking me 10 to 15 hours a week. And that's why back then, many weeks I would just get out one video or some weeks I would get out two. Editing takes a lot of time, even professional excellent editors, a video can take them two hours or more. Uh, it all adds up. So I have, I have video editing. Video editing is at least 20 hours a week. I have an editor for that. That also includes doing thumbnails, videos on Facebook. Also adding to it is videos for the new Large Family Table community website. I also have a blog, largefamilytable.com. If you go over to largefamilytable.com, you see my face, and there is usually at least one new recipe going up over there every day. I have a wonderful assistant who gets those up. I do the recipes, the recipe development, the photography, all the time that goes into that, but she is running the back end of the blog, getting the blog post ready, getting everything linked. It takes a lot of time. And if you blog, you know that each blog post can easily be uh, up to two hours per blog post. I've had blog posts that take me three hours or more. There's a lot that goes into this, okay? So she works for me usually 20 hours a week. There's some other tasks she does for me, like if I'm going to send a big email to my email list, I will have her go around and pull the links for all the things that I have done on the internet for that week. So I can link them to the email and share. There's also special projects and sponsored blog posts and such that comes up. She does all of these things for me. I'm able to just dump it out. She takes it, she gets it done. That's good help. And I have product development that is going on. I have products out now at shop.largefamilytable.com com. There's many products for 2020 in the works. I have two different ladies at this moment who focus heavy on all the tasks I give them with that. Together, they work anywhere from 20 to 40 hours a week. Then I have a, another lady. She actually goes to church with me and she does a good five 
to 10 hours a week for me most weeks. What she does is every video that we post on Facebook, Facebook does not have a good comment moderation system. Usually a few days after my videos post here on YouTube, I will re-upload them to Facebook. I figure I've already paid for editing. Another thing I do is I have all I have closed captioning done for all the videos, which is a dollar a minute. So since I've already paid for captioning, I've already paid for editing, I've already paid for the thumbnail, I re-upload that. I figure more bang for my buck, I re-upload that to Facebook. Those videos get decent views over there on Facebook and actually at this moment reach a whole other volume of moms that I don't necessarily reach here on YouTube. That being said, here on YouTube, I read every comment. So I read every comment. I hold all my comments and personally moderate them. That way I can answer them, I can delete them, I can publish them, whatever I want to do with those comments. Anywho, over on Facebook, there's not a clean and easy system for that as of yet, even in the back end in creative, Creator Studio, it's still, it's a nightmare moderating the comments. I had tried uploading videos to Facebook uh, about a year and a half ago. Those videos didn't go very far. Then Facebook got into this thing, you just never know, and that's the way it is with these social media sites, got into this thing with the algorithm where all of a sudden they were showing my videos. And so my videos would start like the one where I bought a whole cow. I mean, that one has hundreds of thousands of views and it had hundreds of comments and it was just a mess trying to keep up and moderate the comments. So all that to say, all my videos now on Facebook, the comments, every video, every day has to be checked for new comments and then either deleted if someone's being trashy, uh, answered if they're asking for something or dealt with in some way. We have to do like old school manual digging moderating and it only increases the more videos I post. See, fun times. This will be like, I don't wanna work online after all this, JMRL, but this is like the nitty gritty, okay? So anyway, I have this one sweet mama who works for me. She handles the Facebook comment moderation. Like she sends me any comment threads I personally need to comment on. If someone says, hey Jamerell, where's your low carb uh, pizza stuffed chicken recipe or whatever, she gets them those links. Uh, if it's something simple like that. If someone wants to know, hey Jamerell, where do you buy that big 30 quart bowl? She is perfectly capable of giving them that link. That's not something I have to do. Also something new is as I've added more products to my business, I have customer service issues that come up. People might have questions or a suggestion, or maybe it's something that they bought a year ago they can't find their file for. They can email into customer service. She can look up their original order. She can give them what they ordered. And then I have graphic design work. I'm kind of jumping all these together because these are, these are things that aren't necessarily done consistently every week, but they do add up over time. We have tech support, and we'll say one-off projects. So I'm gonna put, uh, it's, some of these things are a window. I'm gonna put 10 to 20 hours a week for that. Sorry, I couldn't help myself, I just ate some wheat thins, but now I'm gonna slowly see this bottle of crystal ice behind me go down, 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 down. Uh, so we're having a Facebook party on, we had it, Future JMRL on January 17th. It's only a two hour party, but if you've ever done a Facebook party, there's um, a good 20 hours of prep work to get everything set up for it, to get giveaway sponsors and do all the questions and just line it all out. There's the actual hosting of the party and then afterwards there's a lot in finishing everything up, getting giveaways to the winners and all of that. I have hired a VA last week to get the Facebook party ready for me. I've run a Facebook party before and they are a good 40 hours. It's like a full week work week just to do those Facebook parties. And I know they're not even super popular anymore, but I'm old school, I thought it'd be fun. I still wanted to do one. I don't have 40 hours to put into doing a fun Facebook party. I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna show up, I'm gonna chat, but all the prep work and all the after party work is being done. And in turn, I'm supporting the business of another homeschool mom. And so none of this includes what I do in a given week. And what I do in a given week, uh, I'm gonna say, <laughs> we'll put me as CEO, right? The tasks that I do are tasks that only I can do. What I have learned in my business is to, over time, and this is how I'm still here, is I hire out as, the, as things grow and as I'm able, I'm not buying myself a fancy new house or fancy new car or anything spectacular. 
I am growing my business and I only can do that if I have the team and the support and the help that I need. So anyway, my work hours will be anywhere from 15 to 30 hours a week, depending on the week. Now right now for two weeks, I know I've been hitting 40. I only do that heavy about two, three, probably up to four times a year. I'll have those pockets where it's just crunch time, gotta get stuff done. So all of the business math, we've got two, four, eight, 90. I'm doing high side, 100, okay, 90, 110 plus 30. So high side, to do what you see me doing, and it feels like it's not that much, but it really is, is 140 hours a week. I can't do that by myself. I wouldn't want to. Yeah, mama needs help. Low side, we'll say, we'll say low side now. Two, four, six, 65, 75, 85, 90, okay. Low side is 90. Low side is 90, but I feel like I'm leaving off a few other little support things. So I know I've been saying 110 to 120. Well, there you go. There's our, there's our average, right? So we've got 90 hours a week, low side, high side, 140. We're probably averaging somewhere between 110 and 120 hours a week. What's neat is our, all these people who work for me are homeschool graduates or are homeschool moms who work from home. I think, uh, not that it matters where their kids go to school, but I know I have at least one mom on here where her kids don't homeschool. She's a stay-at-home mom, her kids go to public school, all that to say I'm supporting different work at home and mom businesses by having the help I have. So I know that that mama asked me how many hours a week I work. There's my long-winded answer for you. Another mom here is wanting to know how do I vlog and homeschool my kids? How am I able to keep up with YouTube? Well, again, I don't just do YouTube, but YouTube in the past year and a half has become a bigger part of, of where I share. Um, I have, I have a lot of help, I hire it out. And I know there are mamas out there because I was too, where you're just starting out in YouTube or you've been doing it a little bit and you edit all your own stuff and you're, I was talking to, I even talked to moms with channels bigger than mine and they still do all their own editing. And boy, you certainly can. I just know I have to assess, it got to the point with me where it was okay, what is something I can give over to someone else to take off my plate? Then in turn, I have those hours to put to something towards something that only I can do. And so that's how I got to the decision with the editing myself. Okay, another mama says, do you entertain your toddler most of the day? I feel like I always have to entertain mine. Well, and I'll probably cross over. That's the thing, when I get doing these questions, I think of all the questions that I have and how many of them relate. And that's where, if I could take some organization time before doing these videos, there you go. But I can't, so until I can hire someone to organize me better, this is what we get. Anywho, uh, I'm real big into getting kids outside to play and for exercise. And so we, and so we definitely start our day with that. We get outside as much as possible. Now yesterday, as an example, heavy homeschool day, we were not able to get outside first. Also that happens in the winter with these colder days. But yesterday, weather-wise we could have, we just were doing so much school we never made it. And then we had a two-year-old running around the house. So what I ended up doing is once I was done with Daniel and Amelia's table work lessons as I call them, I got out our big box with all of our homemade Play-Doh, all of our, our Play-Doh cooking tools and cookie cutters, etc. And then out here on this TV, I put on phonics videos and math videos, and I just let them do Play-Doh for a good long time while I did table work lessons with older kiddos. It was like an indoor Play-Doh day, and then we cleaned up the Play-Doh, and then we had a meal, and then we had story time, and then we got blocks out. So I have things for them to do in the house, but really what works well is to get them out to play hard in the mornings. That way we come back in for a bit to do blocks, to play, to have lunch, to do stories, and then they're ready for a good nap. <laughs> so that's my uh, being a mama for all these years secret is they play hard, they nap hard, 
and that helps make the world go round. Okay, another uh, number eight mom asked what I am videoing with. I am videoing with a Canon G7X. I bought it, I think I bought it off of walmart.com. It's on Amazon for six something, and the same camera was like $100 left, less on walmart.com. It's pretty much like the standard vlogging camera. I do think they have an upgraded model out before that. A lot of my older videos for like the first three and a half years are on a GoPro. That was really convenient because I could just slip it in my pocket. Um, but yeah, I film on a Canon G7X. Someone else is asking, how are the chickens? The chickens are fantastic. I know I have another question on there on if my chickens ever started laying eggs. And no, my chickens did not start laying eggs. We just never made it to that point before Winter came uh, with my last flock of chickens that I raised at the farmhouse. I got them, I think I got them in May, and they were laying by October. These chickens, I think I got them in June, and we just hit that time change where, no, they won't be laying till spring. They sure are enjoying all my vegetable scraps though. Another question is, what music do I listen to other than worship music? Well, I do listen to a lot of worship music. I'll say worship music wise, I love Keith Green. Please look up these people if you don't know already. Some of my favorites are Keith Green. He's a worship leader from the 70s. He died in the early 80s. Love, love, love Keith Green. I also love Paul Wilbur, with which is more uh, messianic worship. I just love it. Love him. Robin Mark is another one that I love. Um, and of course, Michael W. Smith and many of the classic worship leaders. Uh, look at these kids, a few more marshmallows here. But then what's funny, so non-worship music. Well, I'm a 90s girl, so if it's from the 90s, I know it, and I can probably sing it to you here in two seconds. And what, what's very funny is when we're out now, we're shopping or, or at an appointment or whatever, they're playing oldies, they're like, they're playing our 90s music, Travis, and we always know all the songs, it's funny. So anyway, um, the other day, Naomi and I, well, of course, Lauren Daigle right now, we really love a lot of her music. Um, so Naomi and I were talking about songs that we love, and I was telling Naomi about Jewel, who I listen to, I could sing you any Jewel song, I think, um, telling her about Jewel, and then it's funny, it's my old mom thing, I tell her about Jewel as if I've never told her about her. And then I'll play her a few, then I'll play her a Jewel song, and Naomi will say, well yeah, you, you told me this last time. So it's just funny. It's like every six months to a year, I'm like, I used to listen to Jewel. Listen to this song with me. Uh, it's not Christian, but listen to this song. So, uh, but a song I remembered the other night when Naomi and I were out. Oh, and that's something that I do. When I go to have my work days, I will take one of the older kiddos with me and make it into a fun day out date too. Um, anywho, I remember this song by Lisa Loeb in the 90s. Oh, and I can just sing the whole thing. So look up Lisa Loeb. You may not know who she is. I love her. I can sing her music if I can't do nothing else. So that's some of my non-worship music that I enjoy. We also like a lot of instrumental music. Listen to a lot of piano guys and the group Simply Three, I still listen to them a lot. Um, so yeah, that's some music that I like. Another mom asks, can I do a video with just Instant Pot meals? She got one for Christmas. I am getting ready to go into a big Instant Pot time. I've obviously had a big slow cooker time around here lately, so we're getting ready to go into a big Instant Pot time. I just try to cycle through based on questions that I get from moms and different kitchen appliances and sanity saving tricks that mom has asked me about. So I was getting a lot of crock pot questions and I've just gone through a heavy like six weeks of sharing a whole lot of the slow cooker. I'm getting ready to hit the instant pot hard. We're gonna be doing a lot of instant pot and pressure cooker things and recipes for those and tips and tricks. And I got some cheesecake stuff, some low carb, cheesecake and traditional cheesecake in the Instant Pot. You're gonna love it. Um, another mom asked, are you wearing dip powder on your nails or gel? So these are gel. 
Uh, this one broke last night. My nails grow very hard naturally. These are my real nails, except of course I broke this one, but I was making 30 pounds of mashed potatoes last night doing a potato video for the membership community. I lost this nail last night when I was doing all of that cooking for that video. So about every six weeks or so, I've been, when I go in to have my hair done, because I'm having my hair done because I'm having so many hair issues, I can also have my nails done. So that's my mama treat every about every six weeks. Another mom asks, how do you deal with criticism? It feels like everyone has an opinion on how you should live. And she's probably asking more uh, just for moms in general. <clears throat> I'll also say criticism on YouTube or on the internet is very, very hard. Uh, it's hard on me. It's hard on anyone who puts themselves out there. I know one person recently told me that I can't handle the criticism and I should just get off YouTube. Ultimately, people can say whatever they want about me. They can pick me apart. They can pick apart my slow cooker. <laughs> they can pick apart uh, my peppers here and my paper plate. And so the way that I deal with online criticism and life criticism, even before I was online, and so again, this is where I think maybe this mom's question is more coming from. Um, people will ask me about dealing with criticism because homeschooling or criticism because we have a whole lot of kids. I get back to my personal relationship with Jesus and that really is all that matters even beyond my relationship with my husband and my children and my family. God is not mad at me and God is not mad at you. And God looks at you and thinks you are doing a wonderful job and you are beautiful and you are not broken in him. When people criticize me for whatever reason, at what other stage of, at, in whatever stage of life, I know that God does not criticize me. So it's kind of like the, I'm rubber and you're glue, you know, whatever you say bounces off me and sticks to you. I don't wish that on anyone and I do, listen to me, I know that words hurt and I know that words really can penetrate, but I'm telling you the only way that I deal with it is through my relationship with Jesus. And so I turn off the noise. Again, that's why I don't necessarily, that's why unless I'm in a busy season, I'm not checking social media every day. It's funny when you look at all the thing, all the exhausting things that people put their energy into, they've got nothing better to do than to pick on me about peeling oranges. Okay, whatever you want. But I'm gonna keep showing up and I'm gonna keep peeling my crooked oranges and I'm gonna enjoy myself while I'm doing it and that's that. Another mom asks, how do you decide how many kids you wanted? We have never had a number on kids. Now I have done extensive videos on our journey to becoming a large family. I had four children in my 20s, I had four children in my 30s, and I'm 40 now. I do plan to have more children and to adopt some kids at some point, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. So I have never had a number in mind, but I did go through a process of laying down a number and just deciding we'll just see what we end up with. When people ask Travis, how many kids he how many kids he's gonna have he always has, he has said for years all of them so whatever that is so I will link that video down below for you as well so you can hear all about that another mom asked was it tough going from one kid to two kids yes I think going from one to two was tough for me I remember can we have all the postpartum feelings and I was in a different life situation just a lot going on uh, whenever I had my first son I had, you know, everybody shows up with a meal and I was able to rest and hold my baby and, you know, lots of people in and out, yada, yada. <laughs> Whenever I had my second son, my husband and I had just moved. There was no like refrigerator and freezer full of prep meals. My ankles were swollen. I was getting ready to start nursing school. And I just remember um, when my second son was just a few days old, boy, he was probably, we were at the hospital three days, so probably four or five days old. I remember my son, who's an adult now, you know, being two and a half, crying on my leg, and the baby's crying, and I'm crying, and I'm trying to change the baby's diaper, and we were just like this little crying circle. And so we just, all three of us cried, and we got the diaper changed, and we went back out on the couch, and I nursed the baby, and I read to my oldest son. And so just finding your little routines, taking things really, really slow, as slow as possible, just sitting and nursing and reading. That's probably why we love reading so many books, because so much of my 
mama life, my default is, let's read. Let me read you a story. You read to me. And so re reading has saved my life. There you go. Another question is, do I do regular sized meal plans? So what I've tried to do in my large family freezer meal packs, they are large family size. If you wanna get a pack and end up with 40 good sized meals in your freezer, those packs guide you through. But we also added in a, a, but then we also added into all packs four through nine. The first three don't have this. But for packs four through nine, there's a bonus single family edition. So you can follow that grocery list and those additional bonus recipes and end up with 10 to 12 meals like a normal person if you'd like. But besides that, I feel like there's so much help out there already in the regular meal plan space and regular recipe space. I really try to offer the help of what I need and what other moms I know need. We need help feeding a whole lot of people all the time. That being said, I know even right now in my new large family table community, there are empty nesters, there are single moms, there are families with different dietary needs. We have a mix and I share a lot of baseline helps that anyone can apply. Another mom asked me, how do I find Jesus time with lots of littles? And so I, and I feel like at this moment, my lots of littles time is kind of down because I mean, I do have a two and a half year old, but everyone else is five and above. A big thing that I like to do is in the mornings after I get my coffee, I sit down and I have my Jesus time and I journal. Um, someone asked me about Bible journaling. I'm not doing so much specific Bible journaling at this time, uh, but I do journal and I journal about my Bible. So maybe that's the same thing, but she was asking more. I bought a special Bible from her Instagram is called The Salty Biscuit. And it's a beautiful Bible that she hand decorates the front and it has the journaling on every page. I'm not using that at this time, although that's a lovely idea and I would love to do so. Um, but I do still use my personal journal. I am using more of like a bullet journal system. I got into that this fall. It's not so fancy and pretty where you'll be super impressed, but I do use it and love it and enjoy it. And whenever I do lunches like this, my apples are out of the bag. I had a big bag of apples. I know recently with my recent um, big once a month grocery shopping haul, for January, even though I bought six spaghetti squashes, that's my my running joke. I've got some questions about where's all the fruits and vegetables. Well, I bought a pretty decent amount. Again, hello hashtag six spaghetti squashes. Why don't you see these? But anyway, sorry, laughing at my jokes. Um, by the way, I had lots of things at home. I all I we still needed to use up. Like we have two bags of celery, had lots of oranges. This is what's left of the apples. We did lots of apples yesterday. All that to say, I had some things I didn't need to replace quite yet. I will put those in a bag though and we will take those with us again more. I think of things like that, what's left scrounging around in their lunchbox and then um, driving home. So if they have eaten all their lunch or they finish it, Anyone can also have an apple. Yeah. Another question is, what brought you to North Carolina? Well, I'm not in North Carolina, so there you go. Born, raised, lived my whole adult life in Virginia. Um, someone did ask though, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? I really think I would live here in Virginia. Now, I love to visit California. I love to visit Florida. I love to visit New York City. Um, I've been to Dallas. I've been to the Grand Canyon. I've been to Lake Tahoe, you know, been around. I know, I know this spring I'm going to Utah. There's some other places I'll be going to. Still up in the air. I have some questions about if I'm speaking at any homeschool conferences. See, that's some of past Jay Morrell. I used to speak every year for several years at the Teach Them Diligently conventions. My last one I went to, I had even vlogged it. We were at the farmhouse, Daniel was a baby. So anyway, um, our van broke down on the way there and it was like eight hours from home. And of course, Travis can fix things. He fixed the van in the AutoZone parking lot. We didn't get in though to the, to the center where I was speaking until like midnight. My plan was to get, we were supposed to get in, we'll say like six, and our room had a kitchen. And I was gonna go to Walmart and then have our food for the days that we were there. Well, we ended up not getting in until midnight 
but we had no food. And so at midnight, I had to go to Walmart. Ended up getting to bed probably about two or three when it was all said and done, and I had to speak at 9 a.m. That just stinks. And so we've had some false starts over the last few years, and that was part of getting our new to us van as I thought, oh yeah, I'll be able to travel and speak at conventions again, that'll be great. But we have some stuff coming up this winter that's just gonna not make it possible. Homeschool speaking convention season actually starts like February, and then you have to be ready months before then. Okay, so here's my, there's my mama lunch. Get, stay in, stay, stay in place there. Um, and then, like I say, I'll probably have an apple or three on the drive home. Why did I choose homeschooling? I will link that video. There's gonna be like 10 videos linked below, but I have a, a long Q&A just on how we came to choose homeschooling. Are you all still considering moving? Well, let me tell you, we've been looking for a long time. Not that we haven't loved and enjoyed this house, but my eyes are always open for a brick rambler on a full basement in a decent location. So when that when that comes to pass, you will you'll see me a running. Another mom asked, will you still be vlogging on YouTube with your new membership site going? And I have received this question a whole bunch. Nothing that I already share is changing. What the Large Family Table community is, is an opportunity for you to go deeper with me if you appreciate the things that I share. What I'm doing over there is helping mamas even more with kitchen and meal time sanity. Members will be members will be getting an exclusive class with me every month. Uh, members will be getting an exclusive video class with me every month. They'll also be getting exclusive recipe and cooking and kitchen videos, also special request videos. I'll be taking those. These are not videos that you will be able to see on YouTube or on Facebook or on Instagram or anywhere. These videos will live and are exclusively in the membership community. I have themes set up for every month, an, over, an overarching umbrella where this month we are doing all things slow cooker. So last week they had a slow cooker class with me that came with pretty printables and all the lovely things. And now this week I have four new slow cooker videos up over there. That's just in the membership community. Members also get access to my printable library, which is meal planning pages, I've got a homemaking binder. I have a 10 large family table recipe cookbook. I have my brand new book, Freezer Meal Cooking Pro, that, that is full of tons of freezer cooking tips and tricks. I've shared over in my Insta stories, some moms are printing off all these beautiful printables and making their own large family table community binders. It's beautiful. I have a calendar that comes out every month with our special dates on when new videos and new helps are gonna post. I have a special guest every month who's going to teach us something that goes along with our overarching theme. And I'm also doing a live call for members every month where they are gonna get a special link where they can join me live and we are gonna chat up questions I've received and our victories for the month and what we need going into the new month. And it's gonna be a whole lot of fun. When I originally launched membership, I was gonna do it for $15 a month or $99 for the year. But when I went to launch, I thought, no, I'm gonna make it an even better deal. So it's $12 a month or half off of that for the year, $72 for the year, breaking down to six bucks a month. I had one mom say, I can't find where to sign up for $6 a month. Well, you can sign up for $12 a month or if you pay the 72 for the year, you divide 72 by 12, there's your six bucks for the month. So I have mamas joining at both price points. They also get one of my new products from my shop every month, a $14.99 or higher value. Like this month, they get my brand new product. It's large family slow cooker dinners and a four week meal plan. It has weekly, bi-weekly, and a once a month grocery shopping list if they wanna get everything to make all of those 20 dinners at one time. Now I grocery shop for those 20 dinners. I got everything I needed for under $200. I will also link that video in the description below so you can see everything I got. So all that to say, membership is more from me and more of the help I wanna share for moms. You can still find all of my other videos here on YouTube. Recipes are always free over on the blog. We've got stuff going on Facebook and follow me on Instagram. Another mom says, what do I do for myself to help unwind when I've had a long day? So 
been a while since I've had Halo Top. <laughs> but I do love to have some Halo Top and veg out in front of some house hunters. Now usually what that looks like is I might house hunters episodes are like 20 minutes. I will get through one and maybe half of the second episode and I'm asleep. I don't do that every night, but especially right now while I'm in this big work chunk for these two weeks, that's what I've been doing to kind of unwind and get to bed. But normally what I like to do is read for at least 30 minutes. Now that can get to me, and I know I have some book questions on here, um, that can get to me if I read and things go well, 30 minutes, I'm done, I go to bed, but I can also read and things go well, and then it's 2.30 or three in the morning. I did that with a book called Before We Were Yours. It was fantastic, I read it in two days. I also did that recently with another book called The Tattooist of Arschwitz. Uh, again, that was like another two or three day book. Just, uh, I do binge reading. <laughs> and another question, do you have a book you've recently read that you've loved? Yes, I love those two. Right now, I'm reading a whole lot about Harriet Tubman. We're doing a Harriet Tubman focus in our homeschool right now. I'm also doing a thing where I'm speaking to the youth at our church the first Sunday of every month. They pull all the classes together. I'm speaking about a Christian hero from our Christian heritage. So for January, I talked about Gladys Alward. If you're not familiar with Gladys Alward, get books on her, read about her life as a missionary in China. It was amazing. This month at home, we're doing a lot of Harriet Tubman. So I'm going to be presenting and talking a lot about Harriet Tubman. So I'm personally reading a lot of Harriet Tubman books and I'll be sharing on Instagram my reading for January. It's hard to share it all. But you also know I recently bought four cross stitches, if you follow me on Instagram, with a goal of if I can do one cross stitch a quarter, okay? Okay, so I will be sharing my reading coming up later in January. Um, so yeah, right now I'm just loving reading all the Harriet Tubman history. Uh, another mama says, are you still planning on moving? We'll see how everything lines up. Another mom wants to know, do I wear false eyelashes? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Today, I have worn false eyelashes. I tend to put them on for fun when I do videos because you gotta do something for fun, right? Another mom wants to know, how do you handle snacks? Is it unlimited grazing or is there a cutoff before mealtime so they eat? So the way that we handle snacks is there's always fruit available. So when I have uh, 50 pounds of bananas on my counter and we're gonna eat in an hour, if you're absolutely starving, you can have a banana or you can have an apple. There'll be different times where I prep up carrot sticks and celery and have hard boiled eggs available. So those are our snacks throughout the day. These other things, we also will take fruit and everything to basketball, but then just like today, I've packed some snackies for on the go and that's just fine too. Another mom wants to know what I do for health insurance. So whenever we became an exclusive full-time self-employed family, yes, even before I was doing YouTube, and at that point, and we still are Christian Healthcare Ministries, I will put that link in the description below so you can see how that works for us. Another mom wants to know what is my favorite Bible verse. So a verse that has always spoken to me is Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace and remain at rest. Another verse I love is no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I shall show to be in the wrong. Another mom wants to know, do we ever let our dogs inside? Yes, much of the time our dogs sleep inside at night. Do I like my hair short? I don't, it's not my favorite, but it's okay and it's something different. I'm a long hair girl at heart, just years of dealing with my hair turning orange and other fun, exciting things. I felt like I just wanted to cut it and kind of start fresh. So it is something different and I don't focus on it, but it's not my favorite and that's okay. It's okay for something to not be our favorite. Another lady wants to know if I've ever been to the Green Valley Book Fair. I have not, I should. It's on the list. How am I liking master books? So let me, I guess I better work on putting stuff away while I talk. Um, <clears throat> I have really enjoyed using master books this year. Not sponsored, not sponsored. They could be exclusively what you use. There's a lot of information in them for hands-on activities and adding to. I'm enjoying master books because most of the time I love doing my own thing. 
I love designing my own homeschool curriculum. I love going deep, for instance, with Harriet Tubman doing unit studies on topics. I could go all in on that as the core of our homeschool. I like something like Master Books, though, because if we have a fly by the seat of our pants lighter day where I still want to make sure we got all the basics done, Master Books can be our spine. When I have days, which I feel like are, are more of our days, where I'm sorry, Master Books, I love you, I enjoy you, but there's all this other stuff over here I want to do. We still have our master books. We can still check those boxes. I don't have to plan or do a lot of thinking with any of that. And then I can do all the things I want to do with my kids. So that's why it's working for me. There's another curriculum called Christian Light Education that moms use, especially working homeschool moms that I know. Uh, they really appreciate their particular layout. My friend Rebecca from Homeschool On has a new curriculum called Gather Around Homeschool. Lots of moms are enjoying that. When moms ask me what curriculum to use when they first start homeschooling, because I'm a literature-based mom, you know, just all the books all the time, I usually tell them to look into Five in a Row is a great one. Also, My Father's World and Sunlight are some of the good Christian homeschool standard curriculums where you're also going to be reading great literature within all of it. For years when I had like $100 a year to homeschool, and I've done videos on that, so again, it's just going to be like the links in the description. Um, I would take the free catalog from Sunlight and I would get their books at the library for free and I would design unit studies around the structure of their core until I got to the point where I could buy Sunlight cores used and then even sometimes buy them new. You just make it work. Another question, this is a good question. Um, I run a small museum, how can we reach out to homeschoolers? So what I would do is I would find out about the homeschool groups in your area. Each state should have like an umbrella organization. If you're not sure for your state, like I know in Virginia, it's heav.org. Home Educators Association of Virginia. And if you were in Virginia, you could call them and you could find out about the local homeschool groups. You could send your offer to those group leaders, but it's a matter of making the connections within the homeschool community. As a homeschool mom, when I know of a discount or when I know of an awesome place, all the moms in my homeschool group know, I'm sharing it on Facebook. There's a lot of organic sharing. I would start by finding out your state organization, if you're not sure of your state, go to hslda.org. That's Homeschool Legal Defense Association, but they have information on all the state homeschool groups. So anyway, you want to get in on the state level, find out about the local groups, and then share your offer with them. There's usually marketing opportunities with email lists and such in the homeschool business world where you can send your offer out. Another question, is freezer cooking worth it for one person? Please help. I hear from viewers who are college students, who are single working professionals for various reasons in life, and they even will do my recipes, but they break them down smaller, and so they end up having more meals. I've heard from, again, empty nesters who make my nine by 13 pans, and they'll put them in eight by eight pans, and so they'll get two of each pan, and it works out well. So I did not freezer cook as a single young person, but if you are a person with a full life doing anything, you can benefit for some meal, with some meals in your freezer. And then someone asked, do you and Travis ever get any alone time? Yes, we go to the chiropractor. Yes, we go out to Lowe's and do errands and that's our alone time. Will you ever stop homeschooling? I don't think so. You know, there is there is the opportunity. I could put all the kids in private school and I could just work all day every, every day. And I do know moms who've had businesses and businesses have just gotten to the point where for various reasons, and I'm sure that's not the only reason, but for various reasons, they transition from homeschooling and usually go to private school, sometimes public school, sometimes charter school. I know I have at least one mama I know who does a university model school where the kids do two to three days a week at the school and then the other two days at home. So there's lots of options out there. I have no desire whatsoever to not homeschool my kids. And then we get back to the whiteboard and we get back to priorities and we get back to what matters most to me. If I have to give up every Friday and go sit in the corner of a McDonald's or a Panera Bread and get all my mama business laptop work done, um, it's worth it to me if I get the rest of the week full on focus mom with my kids. 
that may mean. Again, I'm filming on the fly. I'm filming while I'm packing homeschool group lunches. Uh, it may mean I don't get any outside work done besides that one day. But my goal in life, my heart, my priority is to homeschool my children, is to read to my children, is to pour into my children. It's a small window, mamas, and you blink and poof, it's gone. You got kids launching. Even though I have a lot of kids at home in this season, over the next 10 years, I mean, we're just, we're just launching kids over and over and over again. I thought, okay, I'm 40. If I'm standing here at 50, and if we had no other children, we had no more biological children, there was no adoption being done with the children that we have already been blessed with. In 10 years, I will be standing here with a 12-year-old, a 15-year-old, and an almost 17-year-old, and all the rest have launched. And I promise you this, 10 years is gonna be gone just super quick. It's gone already. I don't even know what you're talking about. It's like the cereal I bought at the store. So my priority and my heart as a mama is to be home pouring into my children. It does not make me a better mama than anyone else. It does not mean that mamas who make other choices are not just as equally pouring into and training up their children. But here's the thing, I can't answer for any other mama. All I know is what I have to do and what is on my heart to do. I am never going to regret. When I am 71 years old and out riding in side saddle competitions like my mom does at 71 years old, that's the kind of line of women that I'm from, um, I won't regret all these years that I've poured into my children. I will not regret all the help that I hired out in this wild business that the Lord has given me that I did not plan. Um, I'm not going to regret this. I don't care. As my business grows, I continue to invest in help to keep doing the meager things that I'm able to do. That help in turn allows me to be here making my kids lunch for homeschool group, driving them to homeschool group, spending the day with them. When we get home today, our plan is we're gonna pop a whole bunch of popcorn, probably slice down any apples that are left. We're gonna finish our current Harriet Tubman novel. And I got and I got probably five more Harriet Tubman books in the mail yesterday, and we're just we're just going to town, having a full-on Harriet Tubman afternoon and evening, and that's after the day at homeschool group because those are my personal priorities as a mama and my heart for pouring into my kiddos. And so another mom asked, how can you be such a superwoman managing all the things? Well, that's it. I make choices based on my priorities. Like I knew back in the day, I'm gonna talk about it till the day I die probably. Um, back in the day when I had that wild blog idea that overtook me and I was having, I had at least a year and a half where I was working 60 to 70 hours a week myself. Well, my husband was on forced night shift, working 70 hours a week of night shift or he wouldn't have his job. There were no choices in that. I knew that we had to get life to the point where we could actually live and enjoy life, whatever that meant. And so this rolls into another question I have. I have this about three different ways what does Travis do from work? Does Travis work? Does Travis help with anything? Travis, Travis, we all want to know about Travis. So we are definitely in a unique situation, but it's not an unheard of situation. Stemming from the time that I shared when I had the blog that was, oh my goodness, it was making money come out of the internet and I needed to buy more fruit. My grocery budget at the time was $300 and I thought I've spent 15 to 20 hours a week on this hobby blog for a year. Lord help me make grocery money from this blog. Then what happened? I got this idea. I built this blog. I launched it. All my faithful mom followers loved it. They came over, they crashed the site the first day. The first month that blog doubled my grocery budget. The next month that blog made as much as my house payment. By the third month that blog made more than my husband who was on forced night shift 70 hours a week. Let me tell you all something though. That is nothing that I have done because I'm so amazing and special. I just had the tenacity to jump out with the wild idea that the Lord God Almighty put on my heart. That's that. So I can only give all the credit to the Lord, so I'm testifying to Him. So when my husband and I, about a year into that, realized he tried to go down to just 40 hours a week because before my site took off, he needed to work all the overtime. We never complained about it. It was like, well, this is just life. He has to work a lot of overtime. I'm home 
homeschooling and doing cl using cloth diapers and boiling chicken and peeling meat from the bone and making homemade cleaning products, making homemade laundry soap. I'm home doing all these things, so he just works a lot of overtime. That's, that's life, and we're very blessed to have work. So when my site took off, he tried to go down to just a normal work schedule. And because Virginia is a right to work state, it doesn't mean what you think it means. <laughs> it means basically his employer could say to him, if you don't work the overtime we're giving you, you don't have, we don't have a job for you. So then whenever I went to have Amelia, baby number six, end of uh, beginning of 2013, my business was almost a year old at that point. We'd been feeling like my husband should come home. Because again, I was working, getting up before the kids were working. I was work, uh, you know, looked like two hours there at least, two to three. Working again during nap time, two to three hours. Working again in the evening from like seven o'clock on. Uh, that's another three to four hours. You can get ten to twelve hours a day in, seven days a week, working an insane schedule. But I don't want to live like that, right? Yes and amen. Okay. So when Amelia was born. We decided, because we had also within all this found the Dave Ramsey book and try to behave and do all our Dave Ramsey things. And so within that time, his employer made it clear if he didn't work the 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., basically six, seven days a week, uh, which just meant we never saw him. And he was a wreck because he was so exhausted. Um, if you don't work that, you don't have a job. So when we went to have Amelia, we're getting back to that, follow, follow my journey. He put in, he put in for Family Medical Leave Act, and he took off three months. The his employer's jaw dropped. They'd never seen anything quite like that, um, and so we tested it. And now during that three months, I had some in income streams changed. I thought, okay, well, he very well may be going back to work after these three months. It's been a great three months. This is a good try. But by the end of that three months. Just like being any self-employed person, I could look at the different ways that I was making money. I, you see things ebb and flow, you see things fluctuate and change, and I thought, We're, we did it. We did this for three months. Um, we want to do this. I need help at home um, with life. And it makes more sense, because we were also looking at, I know one of my friends who had a successful blog, um, she ended up hiring a mother's helper who came to her house every day and so while she would have her pockets of time she'd have to work and do her work things this mother's helper was there to help her with her children she only had uh, she had she had three small children at the time and of course by that point i had six children newborn up to teen years and it made more sense for us since i obviously had something profitable going on it made more sense for him to be home and to help me we would lose his income, but otherwise I was going to pay that same amount to bring a stranger into our home. That was in 2013. I didn't start messing around on YouTube until late 2014, 2015. There was also a, a chink in time there where my husband went back to school for two years and did a two-year automotive program because that was his dream. And we also thought during that time, and this is where you have to watch my large family income video, we also thought during that time that Okay, 2017, by the time he graduates, he'll go back to work in his new career, and my business will just slowly fade, and it'll just become, it'll, it'll go back to, like, part-time in the, um, like, 15-hour-a-week range with just me doing things. But instead, by the time he graduated, things just continue. Woo, woo, woo. Okay, now, now all the, now all the uh, lemonade there is jumping off the counter. Instead, things continued to explode in different ways. And so we decided even once he graduated, that was a full-time program and it was 40 hours a week with his commute and class time being gone. So it was like he had gone back to work full-time for 2015, 2017. So when he graduated in 2017, uh, towards the end there, that's when we were like, well, you still can't go back to work full time because I have all these things going on and 
I need help. So just like yesterday, last evening, there was a bunch of filming I needed to get done. So Travis did all the basketball running. What does Travis do all day? Well, with eight kids, seven still at home, homeschooling. And right now he's watching kids. He's watching his own children. So it's not like he's babysitting. He has the children so I can pack lunches and chat with you on this video. So we work together and everything every day. Usually before we go to sleep at night, he asks me what the next day holds and I give him the list. What the list looks like is similar to that. We could do a Travis whiteboard. Here's all these things in life that need to get done. I want to be with the children and read to the children and pour into the children all day. So he takes this life list and he tackles all of that he can in a day for me. I'm able to sit around the table and pour into our children and homeschool them. And Travis does all this other list of stuff. And I know already there's people like, well, what is that list of stuff? What are all the things that you could possibly need done all day, every day? I don't know about you, but if you look at life, <laughs> there's always a list of stuff that needs done every day. Plus we homeschool. And so those are our family priorities. Travis is home. No, we don't have his income. Yes, I make a full-time income online. So Travis is home helping and supporting me. Another mom wants to know, do our kids share rooms? Do we have stacked bunk beds? So I also have a house tour. I tell you, five years on YouTube, there's lots of videos to refer to. Uh, I have a house tour that shows our upstairs and we see we have a boy's room and we have a girl's room. Obviously in the girl's room, well, they have Benjamin. Benjamin's in the corner of their room right now too. Uh, we had one boy move out. So we have two sets, of bunk, two sets of bunk beds and a toddler bed in the boys room and in the girls room we have two separate twin beds and a baby crib and they have lots of closet spaces up space upstairs and a full bathroom i don't feel sorry for them another mom asks how do you lean on god when you feel like you've disappointed him so that's a great question here's the thing and i i remind myself of this you are no surprise to god you didn't shock him by whatever happened that now makes you feel like you've disappointed him. It says in God's word that the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And it also says that he is the accuser of the brethren. So anything that the enemy can get a hold of and tell you that you're lousy and that you're a loser and that God's mad at you, uh, what that does is that puts a wedge between you and the Lord and you feel like you can't talk to him. But Jesus wants us to come to him as we are. He desires a personal, intimate relationship with us. And let me tell you, there's nothing that you could ever do that would disappoint him and keep you from him. And so I would ask for forgiveness for whatever you feel like that thing is. And I would just start again. It says that God's mercies are new each morning. His mercies are new every morning. Just start again, reach out to him, get your Bible, start reading, pray, ask forgiveness, start fresh. If you're not in a good church home with a good church family, start praying for one. Start looking for one. They are out there and just start again. Another mom says, no question, but last night I dreamed that my family went camping with your family. Well, that is a whole lot of fun. Friends, I hope you have enjoyed this uh, wild lunch packing Jamarelle Stewart gossip. Q&A with me today. If you haven't already, click the first link in the description below is going to be for my new large family table community where I can help you even more feed all your people. So I'll see you very soon with another brand new video and I will chat with you in those comments below. Bye-bye.